Yo, yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Dad, What's for Dinner? Um, so I like my music, I like my food, but one thing I really, really love is comedy. I used to watch Def Comedy Jam back when I was like, when that dropped, like early 90s. I was probably in the fourth, fifth grade. I used to sneak and watch Def Comedy Jam, watch all the comedy specials. So I've always loved some good comedy specials. So today we're going to be reacting to one of my favorite comedians, Bill Burr. This is 11 minutes of Bill Burr just going in, I guess. You know, if you know anything about Bill Burr, he, he be going in, man. He be going in. So uh, without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. Um, if you guys want to see more reaction to comedy specials or just comedy clips, let me know. Leave it in the comment section below. Make sure you guys like, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. But let's go ahead and jump right in. The man, Bill Burr, going in. This is why you can't judge comedians. Do you understand this? Do you understand what the fuck I was saying and how this fucking jackass just heard it? <laughs> Starts out. That classic Bill Burr man, just he has like it seems he has that rage, just kind of under the surface, just like it can just bubble up any second. The second it comes out of my mouth, it's not what I said anymore. It goes into your fucking ear hole and gets cut with your whole fucking childhood. Oh, this is what he means. <laughs> I live this fucking isolated life, man. I go on the road. I'm in green rooms, and I just fucking you know, you slowly go fucking crazy. I did a gig recently, I was in Ireland, and I was in the green room by myself, and I went to turn on the light, it was one of those pull switches, and it wound up around itself, looked like a little noose, and I immediately just thought, what if I just stuck my head in there, and just, <laughs> and just turned the lights out, literally and figuratively. <laughs> was not thinking about killing myself at all the second I thought, hey, what if I just fucking did that? <laughs> and then I looked in the mirror, I caught my eye, and we both laughed. <laughs> yeah, I had this wonderful little moment with myself. No words needed to be spoken, you know? I remember one night I actually considered taking a bath. So I was going to call my wife. <laughs> I was on the road. And I was like, I don't want to have a fight with her. I need to relax. What the fuck can I do? And I thought about it. It's like, women take baths, right? They do. It's a very feminine thing. They have a bad week. I just want to decompress and they just have a soak. You know, they're drinking wine, they're calling friends. I'm so glad you're in my life. <laughs> I feel I can get back out there again. Right? I start drawing a bath, and the water came all the way up. And at the end of the day, I couldn't fucking do it. <laughs> There's just no way as a man to take a bath and not think about killing yourself. You know? <laughs> There's just something about slipping into that coffin-shaped thing. It's like, am I gonna slip my wrist? Am I testifying against the mob? What the fuck am I doing here? I'm a man. I don't take a bath. You take a shower. Hose it off. Block out your feelings. Keep walking till you drop of a heart attack. Come down. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> My favorite thing about the Black Lives Matter marches was the, the store windows that would have the plywood over the windows, and then it would say Black Lives Matter on top of the plywood. I just love the duality of that message, you know? It's like, Black Lives Matter, we're all the same, we're all one. Don't burn down my store, you fucking animal! <laughs> Everybody is welcome in this store. Anyone can come in, one at a time, follow him! It's just a safe space for everyone. <laughs> Every white person likes to lie to themselves that they were alive, you know, 150 years ago, that they would have been working on the Underground Railroad trying to help slaves escape, right? <laughs> I would have been one of the good white people. That's, I would have taken time out of my day, risked my life. And the reality is, is you'd be doing back then exactly what you're doing today. Nothing. <laughs> Not a fucking thing. Maybe a little hashtag, Black Lives Matter. Oh my God, I, my heart breaks on my L-shaped couch. Oh. The L-shaped couch? What kind of a fucking idiot white person refers to themselves as woke? You know, if you, if you actually were socially... Yeah, that word is... <clears throat> that word's a little overdone, man. A little bit, yeah. Conscious, you'd realize that white people stole that word from black people. Once again, doing the Elvis 
sick, right? But you know what? I blame black people for that. One of them fucked up. They were at a party, there was white people there, and they let it slip out. Stay woke, however the fuck you say it, and some white person heard it like, ah, oh, who is that? Oh, yeah. Stay woke, I wanna say that. I gotta say that around my white friends so they know that I'm down. Oh my God, I'm gonna fucking say that. Fucking woke. I'm fucking woke, I'm a woke signaler. I fucking had it, I've had it. I support black people in my white apartment on Twitter. That's what I do. I'm fucking here for you. Anyways, by the time this special comes out, another election will have come and gone. It's just, God knows who we picked, and it's another one. They're not gonna fucking talk about anything. The oceans are dying. They just said the Great Barrier Reef is dead. You know? Genetically altered food. Jeez. There's too many fucking people. I don't even know what they're just talking about a bunch of shit, you know? Bruce has to drop a deuce. Where is he gonna go? Which bathroom should this guy in? It's like, I don't give a shit. This guy has enough money to literally have a porta potty rickshaw running behind him. A <laughs> porta potty rickshaw? A <laughs> porta potty rickshaw? How are you gonna eliminate? A couple billion fucking people. You never think about that shit? You know, they never talk to us about it. You know they talk about it behind closed doors, right? Bunch of creepy dudes all sitting around some giant table, right? They probably talk about it then, just sitting down after like, I trust everyone had their fun. <laughs> Let's get down to the task at hand. There are over 7.5 billion people on the planet. We're running out of fresh water. There won't be enough chicken to feed the others. Does anyone here any, have any suggestions on how to eliminate the pressures of the undesirables? <laughs> the undesirables. Ah, yes, you. Number four. <laughs> you may speak. Well, you know, what, uh, what if we, like, slowly cooked him at the airport? You know? <laughs> slowly cooked him at the airport? You know, just throwing it out there. Like, what if you had, like, a revolving door-looking thing? You made him take their shoes off, they got in, and they, they stood up like that. And you just radiate them from head to toe, once on the way out, once on the way back. Oh, yes, yes. I like that. I like the sound of that, and how would that work? Would you have it on low at first? Sear them like a tuna steak? They don't understand, you let the children go. We'll use them for slaves later, right? No old people, they'll die soon, just people in the prime of their life. And gradually over the years, you increase it. You increase it, they start frothing at the mouth. They don't recognize the children. The property comes back to us. Oh, I. Trust everyone at this table flies private. <laughs> it's safe to say I guess the pandemic's over. Kind of is, right? I mean, nobody gives a fuck anymore, so basically, it's over, right? Yeah, they killed all the weak people. You know, the strong people are here to survive. <laughs> the fatties are gone, the asthmatics. People with lisps. None of them made it! People with lisps? <laughs> <laughs> but you guys survived! Yeah! yeah! You guys survived! Yeah, they said it killed a whole bunch of people, but I gotta be honest, have you really noticed? <laughs> I mean, you drive down the highway, there's still traffic? I thought it was gonna be like, wow! Holy <laughs> shit, a lot of people died! That's so sad and fucking awesome, all at the same time. I have a temper, so that's the thing. That's what kind of ruins things. Everything else I do is fine, but I have a fucking temper, and it just ruins shit. And then my wife always says the same thing. She's always just like, I just don't understand. Where did that come from? Where is that coming from? It's, you just go from zero to 100 in two seconds. It's like, first of all, I idle at 75 miles an hour, all right? So don't give me this zero. <laughs> to 100. I walked into this restaurant 75. I could hear that guy talking too loud on his cell phone from the fucking parking lot. <laughs> yeah, I fucking
fucking tried all of this shit, you know. Whenever she says that to me, though, I swear to God, I just don't understand where is, where is this coming from? It actually hurts my feelings when she says that. Because you know? it makes me feel like she's not listening to me. It's like, honey, how many childhood stories do I have to tell you before you follow the breadcrumbs to the absolute lunatic that you married? I gotta do it, though. I gotta work on the temper. I'm gonna do it. You know, I got the kid now, and I just don't want, I don't want to pass it on to her. You know, I, got, I have like a demon in my family tree, like this fucking rage. It's just, you know, just keeps following us, and now I got it. I have it so bad, like literally my daughter, she's almost, she's a little over two years old. She's yet to meet me yet, you know? <laughs> like the real me. She's seen glimpses of me. I come, hey, how are you? <laughs> she's seen glimpses of the anger, but I'm able to smooth it over really quickly. Like, whoa, daddy almost snapped his phone in half. <laughs> but I see it in her face. I can see the way she looks at me. She's starting to put it together like, this dude's a little fucked up, man. <laughs> I cannot tell you how heartbreaking that is to see from a toddler, much less your own daughter. I'm like, I, 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 gotta, I gotta end this thing, man. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna go back to therapy, do that fucking bullshit again. Fast forward through all these stories I've, I've told a million times. I gotta do it, though. I got, and and uh, I'm gonna do it for my kid and do it for my wife and selfishly do it for me because... No, I'm gonna tell you why. You're not gonna like the results, miss. <laughs> this is why I'm gonna do it, because if I actually don't have a temper, like, I just think to myself, like, what could my wife complain to me? Like, what could my wife bitch at me about, right? She'll find something there. Trust me, she'll, she'll find something to complain about. I fucking crush everything. <laughs> I do, I take out the trash. Okay, the gate was squeaky the other day. I fucking, I fucking, like they made sure that was done. You know? I pick up after myself. I like to think I'm a good dad. I work my ass off and make a great fucking living. Crush all of that. All she has on me is who I am as a person. That's it. Hey, if I could just not be who I was when she met me, I think I'd have a shot, you know? <laughs> oh, that's it. No more, no more, no more. I guess that's it. Yeah, man, that was pretty funny. Let me know if you guys want to hear some more Bill Burr, maybe some Patrice O'Neill, uh, just just any comedian out there that you think would be pretty funny uh, to see me react to. Um, but yeah, man, Bill Bill Burr's a beast, man. That dude's a beast. Uh, definitely uh, top. Probably one of my top five comedians. Um, but yeah, man, if you guys are new to my channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys want to hear some more. Um, but yeah, man, be safe, be good. Love you guys. Peace.